Happy Aloha Friday. Welcome to Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii program. This is your host, Beatrice Cantelmo. This month, we celebrate LGBTQIA Pride Month, even though our current president refuses to acknowledge June as LGBTQ Pride Month. Yes, we do celebrate it, and we will continue to celebrate our LGBTQIA Ohana because love is always a good reason to celebrate. After all, being yourself and being able to love who you love are two of the most fundamental human rights that we hold as individuals. This is still a country where rainbow flags can be proudly displayed on lanais and storefronts. Couples can walk holding hands without fear. That is how it should be. We still have memories of June of 2015 when the White House was leading rainbow colors following the Supreme Court decision to advance marriage equality for the LGBT community in the US. We must not forget that such decision was the result of hard work of many generations of people who worked very hard for equal rights to marry. In recent years, we have seen record numbers of anti-LGBTQ bills introduced in state legislatures across the country. Many of them failed and many unfortunately have passed and we are now faced with new laws that run contrary to our values as a nation. Many of these laws claim to be about religious liberty, but in truth they are about discrimination because they are laws that restrict the ability of local government to protect LGBT residents, laws that target transgender people and laws that taxlessly allow cruel programs such as conversion therapy. We are seeing the passage of discriminatory U.S. state laws denying transgender school children the simple dignity of using restrooms in peace and laws allowing state-funded agencies to bar same-sex couples from providing loving homes to children in need of family. Globally, LGBT rights are also increasingly under attack. In the last month, two men of Arctic province in Indonesia were publicly flogged 83 times for having sex. Days before, 141 men were arrested in Indonesia for attending what the police called a gay sex party. A similar incident took place in Bangladesh, which is one of the 72 countries in the world where homosexuality is still illegal and where a LGBTQ blogger was killed last year. We must not forget the gay men in Chechnya, whose government denies their very existence. Gay men were and continue to be kidnapped, tortured and killed in Chechen prisons. We have long ways to go and must continue to stand up for equality and speak out against hate speech, violence and discrimination against the LGBTQIA community. We do this through mobilization, education, advocacy work and active civic engagement. And yes, we do this by our ability to come together in the spirit of resiliency and willingness to continue to fight for equal rights. Today, we have a very special guest, Carolyn Gulu She is a Master of Social Work and the founder of Rainbow Family 808. Welcome back to our program, my darling. Well, thank you, dear. And thank you for having me on your wonderful show here. Well, how wonderful it is to have the founder of Rainbow <laughs> Family 808 here on Pride That's you know, Month uh, to talk about what's going on uh, locally right. and domestically and globally. That's so, it. Before we jump right in, Carolyn, uh, let's talk about how did you get this lovely family started here in Hawaii? Well, it's only, it's going to be four years in December that we started. It was right at, be, right the day before marriage became legal in Hawaii. December 1st was uh, 2013. So we have come a long way, but we have a long way to go. And we started because we wanted to reach out to the community, not only the LGBT community, but also all of the community, the homeless youth, because we realized that they, that is the most at-risk 
group of young people in our state. And our state is sadly not one that recognizes any help for them. Mm -hmm. So actually, I was quite appalled and uh, not too long ago, uh, there were bills that were introduced to have budget included to support uh, runaway mm -hmm. uh, youth. Mm -hmm. And uh, I they think it's like 40% of them in the state of Hawaii are actually LGBTQ. That's right. And uh, the budget was not approved. No, no. Our budget this last year has been terribly lacking in social justice for a myriad of people. But our gay, our, our homeless youth are the ones that for years they've been there, you know, um, and they just continue. They look the other way. They uh, go around the bills. And it makes, it makes it hard for everyone because it's, you know, they have the, oh, well, they're only gay. Well, excuse me, not only, they are LGBT, I, A, Q, and all the other alphabets that, that uh, anyone can insert in there. But we have to look at the whole of the homeless youth because every homeless youth matters. And we have to make sure that they have a safe haven, a place over their head, and food to eat, and clothing. And when it rains, they need to be out of the out of the wind and the rain. Yes, and you opportunities know. to thrive also. Mm -hmm. uh, it is so hard to be homeless. Actually, Hawaii is the state that has the most homeless children per capita right. in the nation. That's right. And Isn't that a shame? Um, first for us. You know, and it goes against everything that we stand for. It goes against our aloha spirit. It goes against our ohana and our keiki matter. And, and we put our keiki first. We don't, unfortunately, here in Hawaii. And yeah, it, unfortunately, that's an area that needs a lot of improvement. And when I first moved to Hawaii in 2014, uh, I came across Yo, and I was quite moved by the work that was being provided mm -hmm. to the right. youth because being homeless in itself is very hard but having a place where you can come on in for the part of the day that's right and lounge uh, mm -hmm. to things that we normally take it for granted for like granted. having a warm meal take a shower mm -hmm. having clean clothes a backpack with a few belongings mm -hmm. you know that you can go around and uh, the ability to <clears throat> continue to go to school right. or to find remedial right. ways to finish your school through GED. Um, a lot of the health services, right. the counseling, mm -hmm. but a sense of community. Right. That, that was very you know, important to see it happening and to see that level of work threatened by budget cuts. Mm -hmm. it, it really is heartbreaking. And so the one and only place that the uh, youth have is YO, Youth Outreach Waikiki. And everyone, all of us, are just holding our breath to see what the budget cuts across the nation are going to do to them. You know, how are they going to have to lay off staff? Are they going to have to, you know, and when they do that, then we're, you know, um, a lot of volunteers. But you have to have qualified, trained people. You can't just take anyone in there because of all the issues that come with, with, their, with their needs. Of course, you know. and there is also the need for continuity. I mm -hmm. think that one of the strengths of being a nonprofit, but also mm -hmm. a double sword edge, is the part of having volunteers. Yes, volunteers right. can help to a certain extent, but you do have to have programmatically um, sound mm -hmm. uh, programs where you have staff that's paid, right. that they can be there and make a commitment uh, to right. provide those services, which for the community that we're serving, it's very paramount because mm -hmm. they have so many inconsistencies in their lives and being able to see a familiar face and have that reliability That's right. makes a big the difference. The continuity is so important for yes. them because they've lost all accountabil mm -hmm. accountability and you know accommodations, mm -hmm. just, just the bare 
uh, that's, I guess, one of the reasons we had the, the Valentine party for them. To you know, put lots of hearts and everything, and I love yous all over. You know, mm -hmm. to know that people do care, and we are, we'll keep working. You know, however long it takes. Yeah. But, and so later this month, mm -hmm. there will be an event at the Investors. Do you want to talk a little bit oh, about yes. that and the fundraising that you are That's it. putting together? Um, well, uh, that comes from the LGBT uh, caucus within the Democratic Party. They're going to be mm -hmm. celebrating uh, marriage in the United States. And so this will be, what is it, two, three years now that we've had? You know, I, it, Since it, 2015. 15. Yeah. It's Since only two years, but yes. we worked for so long for it. It seems like, you know. And so we have to celebrate our victories. We really do. And it brings people together and p people, what were you doing on uh, June 26th, when the Supreme Court came down with it, you know, where were you, who were you with, you know, that type of thing. And so it's a great time to get together and remember and make new memories, too. Uh, new people move into the community, new couples move into the community, and it's a welcoming. So, and this helps because the LGBT caucus of the Democratic Party has, has been very gracious. Any fundraising they do goes back into the community. Mm -hmm. You know, they helped uh, Yo at the holidays with, uh, what was it? We needed uh, Rainbow. Uh, not rainbow. Well, they came out in rainbow colors, but they weren't rainbow colored. They were um, rain pouch uh, ponchos, mm -hmm. and that's really needed in the winter time here. And so th that was only one of the things that the uh, the caucus did for the youth. Mm -hmm. So there's other people in the community. It just so happens my my son Michael Jr. is the uh, the chair of the LGBT caucus. Mm -hmm. And he's quite diligent about that yes. and very so dedicated. Let's talk about the caucus and the role that they play in the state of Hawaii to advance the rights of the LGBTQIA community. Right. Here. Well, that caucus has been very instrumental in getting bills passed. Like we had a, a birth certificate bill passed for transgendered back in 2015. We weren't the first state in the nation, but um, we, were, we were before Oregon. And Oregon, you know, no, this is Pride Month, state. so it's good to have things to be proud about and to celebrate. And Oregon came through. And what Oregon did was they took all the rights for transgendered and wrote it into one bill. Here in Hawaii, we piecemealed it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. We did one, we did the public accommodations, which was very important, that transgendered could not be refused housing. You know, that they go to rent someplace. They can't say, well, you can't, you can't live here. So mm -hmm. we cleared that out. And then we had to get the birth certificate bill passed so that uh, transgendered can have their gender changed on that so that that helps them get jobs, that helps them in, on their driver's license. And that just, you know, it's like, what a shame we have to have all of these little, little things that most of us take for granted. Exactly. We take it for granted. And and yet some in our community and in the LGBTIQ a community really have to struggle with. Mm -hmm. You know? And it shouldn't have to be the case that That's right. once you've had changed That's in right. your uh, you know, gender mm -hmm. that you have to expend more money and take more time to That's have right. that reflected in your documents. So uh, I'm happy that even though we had to do it piece by piece, that the LGBTQIA <laughs> Democratic Caucus, you know, have been working very hard That's and right. diligently uh, under the leadership of Mike, your mm -hmm. beloved son, mm -hmm. and an amazing board That's to it. make that possible. So we're That's going it. to take a quick break, and okay. then uh, we'll be right back. Okay, good deal. Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Rap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. 
Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Welcome back on Perspectives of Global Justice, and uh, this is your host Beatrice Contamo, and I'm back with Carolyn Gulu. Okay. Carolyn, so we were talking about the good things to celebrate. That's right. About Pride Month, not mm -hmm. just uh, in the United States, but also around the globe. That's and, right. Uh, Last month, it doesn't seem like it was too long ago, That's right. uh, Women's March, uh, Rainbow Family 808 and Amnesty International have eight chapter co-sponsored a candlelight vigil right. uh, for the men of Chechnya who are happening to still being kidnapped and right. tortured and killed in Chechen prisons. That's right. And uh, it's been quite a problematic uh, mm -hmm. issue there. And, uh, you want to share some good news about what the Minister of Germany did this week. Right, so and let's talk just about a little it. bit before that, while we were sending out our cards, um, the our own Department of State, uh, Rex Tillerson, was going to uh, Russia to talk about oil, and he also took with him a statement asking them to stop the persecution of gay men in Chestia. We didn't know that, but we had How some timing. of our cards yeah. going there saying, we need this to happen. And the wonderful thing of it is that it was, it, it, we weren't late because yeah. when you send those cards, you have no idea when they're gonna get there, but it serves as a reinforcement and a validation that what, is trying to happen happened. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was that was all good. And then this week it was like, thank goodness things have changed. Um, the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs mm -hmm. in Germany, under the toolage of their Prime Minister Merkel, she's an absolutely wonderful woman who leads her country. And you can see her handprint on this when they declared that Germany would open their borders to um, men, LGBTQIA, who are um, refugees of persecution. Mm -hmm. And so at least, and, and this is what I had found through the, through the week, was that all this was coming back. We have Oregon coming on. We have, we have this going on. And so it, it took me back. And there's, there is an LGBTIQA uh, organization in Moscow. And they had been working from within the country to, to promote the safety of their people. And so one of the things that I read was, um, I can't say her name or I'd ruin it, Slavana is an activist and a mover and shaker over there. And she encouraged people to whatever action they could do to help them promote the safety of the LGBTIQA community to do it. So we were doing our postcards and they were asking people to do it. So we shouldn't stop. We can't stop. We can't. We More can't than stop. Ever, we can't this is stop. The time that not only we have to continue, mm -hmm. but we have to work as a coalition. That's right. Uh, many fronts, many organizations together uh, right. to support and promote and advance, mm -hmm. you know, uh, LGBTQIA rights. Right. That's it. Not only domestically, but around the globe, because uh, you know, unfortunately. It's really disheartening. It's 2017. We have 75 countries around the globe where homosexuality is considered a crime. That's right. And uh, that's beyond me that, you know, 
uh, I am an ally. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of you know, to be an ally, mm -hmm. but to think that um, someone who may love someone of the same, same sex uh, cannot even show any display of affection in public right. or having to live in fear of persecution, uh, of, of you know, being killed uh, for the simple crime of love. That's it. Because you love who you love. That's Your right. heart belongs to what it feels. And That's uh, right. we shouldn't have to discriminate That's that. Right. And yet there are certain cultures where um not only um you know homosexuality is okay but it's celebrated that's right and uh I mean, well we have to work a little bit more here in our own united states when you have the secretary of education coming out within the last week or so saying that the department of education does not is not in the business of protecting our lgbt well she didn't couldn't even say lgbt iqa uh community and when she said that, that put a target on all students in education, you know, because now it's okay, apparently, to uh, harass them, to beat them up, to um, do all kinds of horrible things that we know happen. Yeah, and, and it you happens, know? but I don't think she, I mean, she may not want to uh, support uh, mm -hmm. uh, our community. But that's, our not her, community. that's not her job. Her job her is to protect is, yeah. all Everybody. students. Exactly. That's it. And so that's what we are seeing uh, you know, lawsuit uh, in the near future. And mm -hmm. I do think that just like what happened with the Paris Accord, uh, agreement right. where Trump agreed you know that the, the United States was not going to be a part of that anymore there is a counter movement to That's say right. you know what we may not need uh, someone at a federal level mm -hmm. who ideally should set the tone That's properly right. uh, to do what's right and proper so I believe in my my hope and I think that one thing I've learned about the LGBTQIA community is mm -hmm. how well organized they and strong, you know, we are as a community. That's and right. so um, to be able to continue to work with the schools, to be able to mm -hmm. have policies at a state and, and county levels right. uh, that says, no, we will not allow that kind of harassment and discrimination and to apply the law as it is, because mm -hmm. the Constitution hasn't changed. No, it hasn't changed. And, and one of the things we have to be very aware of is we have to do it ourselves. We have to, this, this whole month, Wear rainbow lays. Wear a pin that has a rainbow on it. Uh, wear the rainbow state. It's so it's so easy to be rainbow yes, conscious yes. here. And, and it's very hard also to uh, have difficult conversations. I think that there are many layers of uh, being an ally. You know, mm -hmm. from. Uh, befriending someone uh, mm -hmm. from the LGBTQIA community to wearing uh, proudly, you know, mm -hmm. a rainbow uh, garment or gear. That's right. To actually taking part in a parade. We're having one coming in a we couple have of days. One this weekend. So let's this talk about Sunday. it a little bit. Yes, yes Sunday. this Sunday. It's the Equality March, and Equality. it's going to start at the Capitol just like the uh, march started on uh, January 21st for the mm -hmm. Women's March. Now, and the Women's March is supporting them, and Rainbow Family is supporting them, and we're going to have a table out there and a tent so you can get out of the sun a little bit if you need to be and literature if people want to know what Rainbow Family is, because we are rather new to the community. I'm not new to the community, but the Rainbow Family is. But we have to always be out there. And a Rainbow Family will be sending a rainbow lay to Governor uh, Kate Brown, because I'm so proud of her. I've met her once, and she's absolutely delightful. And, and she was, you know, I know she was instrumental. You know, she could have killed, she didn't kill it, and she signed it and with I, much happiness. Yeah, I heard that uh, Senator Brian Schatz is going to be uh, on Sunday. At oh, the, Val, uh, Val. Here. see, you're learning more than I am. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I am just like so proud yeah. of our representatives and, uh, you know, Brian Schatz, particularly for his stand right. on supporting the LGBTQI community. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, 
you know, thinking about the positive, I, mm -hmm. I don't want to smash, you know, the negatives. Mm -hmm. I know that this uh, month our White House and our current president uh, did not acknowledge uh, June as the Pride Month for our LGBTQIA community. And but that's actually, not going to stop us. No, of course <laughs> not. Uh, and, uh, you know, we are here to stay. Uh, and uh, to continue to promote equality right. you know, and, and, and equity too, which is very important. That's it. And uh, so we have a very few minutes left. And uh, I wanted to bring this program to a more personal tone because, uh, you know, you're very supportive of mm -hmm. the LGBTQIA community. Mm -hmm. You have a lovely son who is very proud and openly gay. And her, his and, straight da sister yeah. is right there very with us all well. the way. And mm. uh, but I wanted to ask you, as a mother, mm -hmm. as an ally uh, of someone who, you know, is blossoming, who, you know, is fun and smart and, and just a, a delight to be with, uh, what could you uh, tell to a mother who has a son or a daughter who is in that process of coming out or questioning their sexuality uh, that would perhaps uh, be empowering to that mother and to that child or that young adult? Because there's mm -hmm. so much secrecy and so much shame and, and stigma so still attached don't tell the to it, exactly. They for the to. fear of retaliation mm -hmm. or disappointing them. But for someone who did not seem to have had that issue, <laughs> uh, or, or maybe you did, then what, no. what happened to no, that? No, I um, my idea was before Michael came out, was. Uh, they don't bother me and I don't bother them. Everyone just lives just fine. And then once he came out, all of a sudden, I remembered all the killings I'd read and whatnot. And so when I talk to other mothers for the first time, one of the things I tell them is I tell them to close their eyes and think back to the first time they held their baby. And I uh, open up their blanket and look at their fingers and their toes. And I remember with our first child and our second that that was the most wonderful moment in our lives, to see those fingers that are moving. And, and you know, they say that some people say they don't smile. I say they smile at that age <laughs> when, because they once they get to recognize your, your voice, you know, they they their smile, their whole continents change. And I want parents to think back to those precious first moments and how much love they surrounded their children with. And that's the same love. The children haven't changed. All that's happened is the children have shared something with them, something really important to them. And they need their family's love more than ever. So just go right back in that, you know, memory. And it'll, I can, I don't even have to close my eyes anymore. I just think about that. And I remember just holding them and, and they were so precious. They're still and they continue precious. To be. And that is a wonderful message to uh, end our lovely program that I can't believe came to an end. Uh, thank you. I want to thank you again, my darling, for well, being here. Well, thank you here. for being so kind to have and, me. Uh, uh, well, this concludes our program for today. Uh, thank you so much for spreading the love and keeping the love going, uh, supporting our LGBTQIA community and Pride Month, which is not just June, but it's every day of the year. There we go. And uh, on that note, uh, we hope.